Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about whether or not we can use CAD models inside of Blender and kind of some of the benefits of doing so. The short answer is yes, you can. Of course you can. All you have to do is export the model as an FBX file and import that into Blender. But I want to show you a bit more of the practical side of this type of thing and how powerful um, CAD can actually be. So the software I'm using here is called Moi 3D. There's a bunch of other CAD software. You know, you have SolidWorks, Fusion 360. There's a ton of others out there. I just think Moi is um, very easy to use. You can learn this in like a day. Um, although I think the workflow is quite inefficient compared to Blender. Uh, anyways, what I'm going to do is just maybe add in a sphere. And I'm going to cut a hole in the sphere. So we're just going to add in a circle. And we're going to cut it here on the surface. Just going to extrude this in. And then I'm just going to run a difference bool in like that. Then what we can do is maybe run some fillets, just basically um, multi segment bevels like that. And now we have a uh, really simple shape. Now, this is kind of one of the benefits of using um, a CAD software is because you don't have to deal with any sort of shading or uh, topology issues like you would have in Blender. So for example, if I had a sphere here inside of Blender and I try to do the same thing, you would basically get the same type of result. But if I tried to bevel this, we're going to get some nasty shading artifacts because what happens is it overlaps the topology around here. So like you've seen in my other videos, the solution for that would be to use something like Mesh Machine and then just run an offset cut and you basically have, um, have a fix there. We can bevel the inside here as well. Um, but the nice thing about using, you know, CAD is CAD doesn't work with topology. It works with mathematical equations. It's, it's vector-based, essentially. So um, it's very precise, for one. And two, shading and uh, shading artifacts can't really exist because there's no topology to really cause it. And this is one of the better sides of, um, you know, using CAD is you can kind of bypass these random types of problems on a Blender. Now, I've said before, I still can get pretty much identical results to CAD inside of Blender. Um, I have plenty of videos showing Mesh Machine and how to use that. Basically gives you a CAD workflow inside of Blender. But um, if you want truly um, accurate precision and you also want really clean shading, that is what CAD is going to give you. So let's say I exported this into Blender. And I don't know how it works in other CAD software, but I assume you just export it as an FBX file. So I'm going to go here to File and then Export. And I'll just overwrite this old one. And let's see, we'll just kind of, um, you can play with the size here. So if you want like a low poly option, you can do that. If you want a high poly option, you can do that. And also you have different outputs here. You have like quads and triangles. So any areas with end gons would be triangulated and all the quads remain the same. You also have an option to completely triangulate the whole mesh, which could be useful um, if you wanted to bring this like directly into some, I don't know, some other software that needed it. But I almost always use Ngons here because it's going to give you the same result that Blender would give you, but with clean shading. So I'll just go ahead and click on the OK button. It's going to export, and then you just go here to Blender, and you import that FBX file. It's really easy. We'll just go in here to Sphere, scale this up. We'll just kind of move this over, and let's rotate this just more or less in the same position. Hole's a little bit bigger, but you know, same idea. And basically what we're going to have here is we're going to have, you know, a, um, a sphere, but the shading is going to be clean. Now, the reason it kind of looks a bit, you can kind of see these squares here is because I did make the resolution a little bit low on the export. So to fix that, you know, I could always make this a little bit higher, perhaps, and I wouldn't really get that problem. Let's try importing this again. Yeah, there we go. So now it's clean. So... If it's too low poly, you might get those weird problems, but I usually just make it higher poly. So in this case, you know, these spheres look almost identical. You know, the density is more or less the same, the cut's more or less the same. But if we go into matte cap, you're going to see a very clear difference in terms of the shading. So here inside of Blender, um, you know, you can see some pretty obvious shading issues around here. They're more pronounced here in this matte cap. You can kind of see it a little bit jagged around there, but in here, the shading is actually completely flawless because this was created with a mathematical precision inside of uh, inside of Moi. So there's a bunch of different solutions to get the clean shading here inside of Blender without having to go through the hassle of you know going into CAD, exporting it, you know that whole ordeal. 
Um, so I have plenty of those solutions in our Topology Handbook 2.0 course, which is a free course. We just updated it recently. Shameless plug there. <laughs> but it's free, so can't complain. But basically, as a summary, um, there's a bunch of different solutions you could use to get the clean shading in Blender. You could use normal transfer. You could use something like quad remesher. So you could actually remesh this thing. We'll just make it just go a bit high on the poly count. But you could actually remesh it here inside of Blender. And that would clean up the shading because now the topology is clean. See what I mean? I mean, you could do other things like just make the model really, really dense to the point where the shading isn't really, the shading issues aren't very pronounced. So a bunch of different solutions. I don't want to go through all of those in this video because I just literally made a free course on that um, for that reason. But what I really wanted to show you here is that you guys can get really clean results using CAD. So if you ever run into a situation where it's going to help you to just make something in there and then export it to Blender, this is basically how you do it, and it's going to give you the same results as Blender minus the shading problems, basically. And that's just the nature of polygons, guys. When you're working with polygons, you're going to run into issues with shading and potentially artifacts from time to time if you're um, you know, using Booleans. It's just the name of the game. It just kind of depends, you know, what is the juice worth the squeeze? Which one is um, better for you and your workflow? And for me, I find Blender to be way more efficient. Obviously, Blender's free, and the paid add-ons that I use are like less than 100 bucks total compared to CAD, which can be like several hundred or several thousand. So to me, I can get all the results that CAD has in basically the same amount of time using my workflow. But I definitely wanted to show you the solution because this is something that a lot of people don't consider. And if you're a CAD user by career or whatever, you can always use those models in Blender to render it or whatever you might need to do. So pretty cool stuff. Um, if you ever want to just make something inside of CAD and bring it in here, you could always use cycles to render it as well, which is, you know, to me, which is pretty cool. That means you wouldn't have to buy like a um, an external rendering engine like Keyshot or something. So you guys have so many different solutions when it comes to hard surface modeling, and that's really what I try to show you in this video. I try to show you Blender, but there are other ways to get some pretty clean results. So that's it for this video. Hope it gave you some ideas. And like I said, I'll link that topology handbook in the description if you want to pick that up. Anyways, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.